President Obama is pressing for a new deadline on the passage of the health care reform after it became clear that the Senate is not going to vote before the August recess. On Thursday, during a town hall meeting in Shaker Heights, Ohio, Obama said he is hoping to sign a bill into law by the end of this year. We just heard today that, well, we may not be able to get the bill out of the Senate by the beginning of August. That's okay. I just want people to keep on working. I want the bill to get out of the committees, and then I want that bill to go to the floor, and then I want that bill to be reconciled between the House and the Senate, and then I want to sign a bill. And I want it done by the end of this year. The Real News spoke to Glenn Ford, the executive editor of the Black Agenda Report, about the state of the health care reform. The House is holding off on, on having a vote of of its own because it doesn't want to be second-guessed by an even more uh, right-wing Senate. Obama's not going to get his vote in uh, both houses before there is a, a, a recess. He wanted that very badly because, in fact, this is all about uh, symbolism and the appearance of getting a difficult job done. It's not about reform. Uh, reform, by definition, uh, changes the relationship uh, relationships of forces, relationships of of power. Uh, this uh, does none of that, and and that's at the root of of Obama's uh, of failure or this fiasco as it is unfolding. Uh, that he set out uh, to create some kind of grand national consensus on health care without confronting power. And when you try uh, to, to make a consensus without confronting power, power all, always wins. Uh, he wound up uh, privileging and empowering the most right-wing members of his own political party. So now we have a gaggle of about five Democrats from the right wing of his party, uh, in whose hands the fate of what's still being called health, uh, health uh, reform uh, uh, rests. And they... They are carrying on their negotiations uh, with Republicans and insur insurers who want no meaningful reform and who, in fact, seem to be making progress uh, in, in actually profiting uh, from, from uh, some, some elements of this alleged reform. That, that is, uh, ha having certain uh, subsidies uh, locked in in return for promises to at some time in the future save the people some money by not gouging as much as they plan. In his primetime address last week, the president has introduced a new term for the health reform. He referred to it as a health insurance reform. Even as we rescue this economy from a full-blown crisis, we must rebuild it stronger than before. And health insurance reform is central to that effort that this is not a health care bill, this is a health insurance bill. And that's a very, very different thing. One is focused on, on getting as generalized uh, quality care for as many people uh, as possible in the national interest. Uh, the other uh, is, is a push and pull between uh, different profit-making uh, enterprises to see uh, how much uh, profit can be garnered through this legislation. And though the president spoke about many agreements and compromises already made, the public option discussion was kept to bare minimum. Having a public plan out there that also shows that maybe if you take some of the profit motive out, maybe if you uh, are reducing some of the administrative costs, that you can get an even better deal, that's going to incentivize uh, the, the private sector to do even better. You incentivize uh, 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 the, the private insurers by presenting a product that is better than what they have. They, however, uh, because this debate is being run by the right wing of the Democratic Party, uh, they are constructing a product uh, that will present as little threat as possible to the private insurers. What they are in fact uh, concocting is an inferior and possibly multi-tiered plan, a very small one, which will be administered by uh, private insurance and only subsidized by uh, the federal government. It will be a, a product that is purposely 
not attractive. Incentive means real competition. Real competition means a product that is accessible to many, many millions of people and that delivers uh, in, uh, delivers a better product than the competition, the private insurers. The whole debate here uh, is not about making a quality product that reaches as many Americans as possible for as low a cost. It is the, the, the heart of the debate, all of this wrangling, uh, is to make sure that the private insurance interests are not threatened by uh, the public option. Uh, therefore, it's a contradiction. Obama also introduced a new idea of creating an independent commission to set Medicare payment rates. It was originally proposed by the Blue Dogs, a fiscally conservative group of Democrats, and was roughly agreed upon by Chairman Waxman of the Energy and Commerce Committee. The, the idea of this uh, panel of, of, of experts uh, sounds like a good one, but of course we don't know which uh, sectors of medicine they represent. And, and also it's uh, totally undemocratic. Who are these high priests who represent some economic interest to impose the standards for, for health care for the rest of us and, and be able to uh, uh, override the Congress? Uh, clearly, the people who propose this are afraid of the kind of public momentum uh, that a real healthcare reform movement uh, would engender and want to put a, another undemocratic uh, uh, obstacle uh, in the way before uh, it gets started. The way the debate was purposely framed by Obama and transmitted in this fashion by the corporate media was that we have Obama, he, he represents progress and the left, nobody to his left, and Obama having this con conversation with all of these people uh, who supposedly are to his right. So we had a right wing uh, conversation going on, orchestrated by President Obama. Uh, he orchestrated it by shutting uh, single payer advocates out of the debate. The only panel to include the single payer alternative in the bill so far is the House Education and Labor Committee where Representative Dennis Kucinich introduced an amendment which lets states create their own single-payer health care systems. So, so the local route is the only way to go. But one has to be realistic about this. Uh, when you go from state uh, to state, this a mishmash of, of programs, uh, you're, you're going to have the same problem that you have uh, regarding states relationships with each other in terms of economic development and all, all kinds of economic issues. Uh, that is, uh, those states that have their own single payer plan, which will have to be uh, paid for, uh, will, will, will then be uh, uh, labeled as being uh, not business friendly. That, that is, that they would be uh, working at a disadvantage in, in the marketplace in the same way that, that uh, more progressive states that have uh, uh, higher levels of benefits have, have always been uh, uh, described as not good places to do business. I think that reform is in fact dead, that every further step they make in terms of deforming this travesty that they call health reform further discredits the idea itself in the minds of, of people. Uh, and, and the more contradictions they build, the more negative the public re reaction will be to the whole experience of trying to uh, construct uh, 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 edifices of, of, of reform. Uh, so this can be worse than nothing. Uh, and the longer they are allowed to play games uh, with this, games, games against the interest of reform, uh, the more likely it is that the public's going to turn against the whole process, and that will set us back possibly decades.